Hi booktube, Lynette here again and in today's video I'm going to tell you about the books that I finished in the month of November. Um, I didn't have too bad a month in November, I started out a little bit slumpy, I had a bit of a, um, not a book hangover, I had a bit of a slump hit in October um, which I struggled with but then in November I did manage to pull it back and started to pick up books and read again. Um, but enough of that, let's talk about the books. So the first book that I finished was a series completion, a duology completion, and it's a romance novel, and that is His True Queen by Jodie Ellen Malpass. I read The Controversial Princess earlier on this year, which was the first book in the series, and this was the continuation. It follows the fallout from the revelations um, at the end of the first book. It follows... Um, the, the British monarchy or a, a version of the British monarchy that Jodie's written and um, the main character, the princess Adeline, she's fallen in love with uh, American actor Josh because of the fallout from what happened at the end of the first book. They have She has decided that they can no longer be together. This book is about how Josh tries to change her mind on that, um, how she tries to balance love with duty and obviously where that takes them in their journey. There are lots of different things that happen. Uh, Adeline feels very manipulated. There is a lot of manipulation going on surrounding their relationship and trying to keep them apart. And I really like the way that Jodie tied this up because it wasn't, it, it wasn't all tied up in a neat bow um, and she couldn't have everything it was quite clear she couldn't have everything but in the end she makes decisions that are the right ones for her and I was really really pleased with that um and I did give this book four stars because of that because I, ju I just like the way that yeah most novels you know she would have ended up being able to sit on the throne she would have been able to marry Josh um he would have been able to uh, be her queen consort um but that is not how it worked out. And I really, really liked the way Jodie did that. And I am I was really happy. Uh, I've not read a lot of Jodie's books. So I think that's this is only the fifth book of hers that I've read. Um, I originally read the This Man trilogy um, a few, quite a few years ago now. Um, and actually it's the sixth book because I read The Protector a couple of years ago when Passion Flicks made it into a film. And I wanted to read the book before I watched the film. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. So she's definitely on my radar to to pick up more of her books. She's got quite a, a backlist now of books that I haven't read that I'd really like to because I have really enjoyed her writing this year. And the second book that I finished in the month of November is one that really kickstarted my reading um, bug again this month. And that is Rose Madder by Stephen King. Rose Madder uh, has been a firm, firm favourite of mine and a firm, firm favourite of Stephen King's of mine um, since I was about 15, 16 years old. I think this came out around about my mid-teens and I absolutely love this book. Um, this book was um, given to me uh, this month by a friend. Um, I they, they laughed at me uh, earlier on in the year because I had so many unread books on my so many unread books um and but so many books that I'd actually started and not yet finished and I made a deal with them that if I dedicated reading my unread book my unfinished books in the month of October if I had a problem and hit a reading slump that they would then buy me a book um as as an apology um and as I said at the beginning of this video, I hit a reading slump in October and my friend came through and they bought me this book. Um, this, Although I, I say this has been a favourite since my mid-teens, I did previously own a copy of this but I got rid of all my books or a lot of my books um, in 2013. Um, and this is one of those books that I regretted getting rid of and this is the reason that I asked for this one in particular to to be bought because it meant a lot to have this one back on my shelves. This book is about uh, Rosie Daniels who wakes up one morning um, literally well not literally wakes up but mentally wakes up 
Um, she's been living in an abusive relationship and an abusive marriage and as she's making the bed one day she spots a drop of blood on the sheet and it's not the day for her to be changing the sheets and her brain is trying to work out how she can hide the spot of blood um, change the sheets obviously without enraging her husband and uh, obviously setting him off on one of the rages it's um there's quite some horrible descriptions of abuse in this book so i i do um i do give a trigger warning for for uh abuse and harm in this book um her husband puts her through some quite horrific stuff and although it's not described in detail it is described in this book and it is definitely spoken about it's not just hinted at um the book opens with Rose have, Rosie having a miscarriage because of the abuse. Um, so be warned if you're going to read this one. Um, but it is about how she, because she wakes up, mentally wakes up because of that spot of blood, she leaves her husband and she goes on the run. And it's how she builds a new life for herself in a new city, um, finds a job that she enjoys, meets a man that she loves. Um but also what happens when her husband finds her, which again is quite horrific in its nature. Some of the things that he does are completely disgusting, but it's also about how the abused women that she meets in this other city that help her, um, who are sub abuse survivors themselves, it's how they also stand up to him and say, no, this isn't good enough, this can't happen. So. I really enjoy this book um it's more of the fantastical it's not although some are, although there are some horrific things that happen in this book it is not a horror book um by any stretch um it's a little bit of suspense a little bit of thriller and the way um her husband is dealt with is a little bit of the fantastical and i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it um i once i had it in my possession i couldn't put it down and I just read it cover to cover straight away um, and I just fell back in love with it and I, I can't wait to start reading more Stephen King and picking up um, all those books that I read all those years ago in my teens, um, mid-teens, late teens um, and absolutely fell in love with. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to picking up more of these. So the third book that I finished in November is one that I started in October and that is The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. This is the second book in his <clears throat> his Dark Material series and I picked this one up because the second series of the TV adaptation started in, <clears throat> at the beginning of November and I really wanted to read it ahead of the series starting. I haven't read these books for quite some years. I read them about uh, 15 years ago, 15, 16 years ago. Um, and I really enjoyed them at the time, but they're ones that I've just never gotten back to, to reading again. So I really wanted to pick this one up and uh, read it ahead of the TV series. So I could see, I like to compare the adaptations of TV and film to the books. And I prefer to read the books first. Uh, so you know what the source material is. Um, really enjoyed this book. It was a bit put up and down. I was reading it mainly on my lunch breaks at work. So it took me a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, the story follows Lyra and Will, who we met in the first book, and it's how they meet. Um, and then where their adventure goes from there is they realise that actually there is a destiny for the both of them and they need to be together at that point. <clears throat> and I can't really tell you much more than that because it kind of gives it away. Obviously, we find out more about Will's father. Um... And we find out a bit more about dust, um, about what's happening in the wider world. Uh, you get more hints at what Lyra's destiny is. Um, and you certainly find out what you certainly find out towards the end of the book a lot more of what her significance is in the story. Um, <clears throat> and I'm really looking forward to actually moving on to the final book in the series, The Amber Spyglass as well although I'm probably going to try and hang fire and again do the same thing and read it ahead of the adaptation when that eventually comes out I'm not sure how they've been able to get on with filming um for that with the the co all the covid restrictions that we've had this year 
so I'm looking forward to moving on and I do recommend this series it's really enjoyable um I think it's more of the 12 to 15 year age group um rather than the, the 9 to 12 um but yes certainly if you've got a, a an early to mid teenager this book would definitely be suitable for them or the series rather would be suitable for them the first book is the northern lights um but i thor like i say thoroughly enjoyed it and it did continue my reading appetite for reading for the month so i'm quite grateful for that as well and the fourth book that I finished this month was an ARC received through NetGalley uh, that I was pre-approved for. I had an email from NetGalley saying that the publisher wanted me to go on and request a copy of this book um, because I'd read previous books by them before and they wanted my opinion, which I was really, really happy with. Um, and I was really, really pleased about that. So I did. I logged in. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I logged in and I requested a copy and was granted it straight away and I had to pick it up straight away because it's a fairy tale it's not a fairy tale retelling it's a fairy tale continuation um only not quite as you know it I absolutely love this book um I couldn't put it down once I picked it up and started reading it I could not put it down basically it's um the follow on from Cinderella only 13 and a half years down the line and the fairy tale is not what she thought it would be. Um, everything starts out in the marriage. Rosie, they have, um, you know, they have a very happy marriage to start out with. Uh, the first child comes quickly on the heels of the, the marriage. And um, but then things start to go wrong from there and what what's actually happening at the start of this book the first half of this book is Cinderella has decided she wants her husband dead that's how she wants out of the marriage she's she's had enough and she has gone to um this old crone who then um who's going to cast a spell to cre cause the death of her husband um, but part of the spell means that she has to put a number of hairs into the cauldron for the number of years that she's been married. And for every hair that she puts in, it goes back over that year of the marriage. So first year, second year, third year. And you can see how things have soured over the years and you, and you get to follow that part of the story and how things have gone wrong. And you get to see that actually Charming, Prince Charming, or he's not called Prince Charming in, in this um, I can't remember what his actual name was, um, but his, he is not who she thought he was. And it's, um, it's about going into these th into love blind, um, because they did get married. Obviously, you know, they, we all know the story of Cinderella, um, and the happily ever after, uh, but it's not the happily ever after. The second half of the book then moves on because as um, it moves into the world as we know it today and it's drawing parallels between Cinderella and the modern world and basically the main character is the Cinderella character um, but she's looking she's going through divorce instead um, and it's how all the things that happened in the first half of the book, how they've been interpreted and how they're having an impact on the divorce and how she um, is being affected by and what's going to happen. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really interesting take um, on the Cinderella story and the happily ever after. And I'm really glad I read it and I'm, I'm I'm actually really glad that I, I got the opportunity to read it and I'm quite grateful for that. Uh, so I have left a review on Goodreads um, and there are quite a few up on Goodreads as well from other people who have had advanced copies. If not, it comes out early next year. Uh, so if you like fairy tales and fairy tale retellings, then I think you might enjoy this as well. So give it a go. Go and search it out. Give it a go. Um, if you're on NetGalley, give that a go. See if you can get a copy from the uh, publisher and and give it a read um i thoroughly enjoyed it and i hope that um the author or olga grushin actually writes more um in this style again because i would quite happily pick them up and read them i've thoroughly enjoyed the writing style as well 
And the final book of the month um, was the book club pick for Just One More Page Book Club and that was Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. This book started out okay, in the middle, picked up, got a bit better and then the ending let it down. I um, have to say though, having never read Daphne du Maurier before, uh, because I'm not a big classics reader, I'd never, I wasn't I wasn't too sure going in whether I would enjoy it or not, whether I would enjoy the writing style. Um, but I did, and I would actually definitely give more books by Daphne du Maurier a try, uh, but maybe not any time soon. Jamaica Inn is about Mary Yellen, whose mum has passed away. Her only living relative is her aunt, who lives with her husband over in Jamaica Inn. And she has to travel across Cornwall. The book opens with her... Um, travelling across Cornwall to go and live with them. Jamaica Inn has quite a reputation. It is a hub for smuggling, which you know going into the beginning of the book. Um, it's got quite a bad reputation. And this follows what happens to Mary when she arrives there. Uh, her uncle, Uncle Joss, he is um, not a nice character at all. Um, he's done some really bad things and... Uh, he draws Mary into that world and makes her doesn't make her a part of it, um, but draws her into the secret so that she is then unable to escape because she would then be implicated in the goings on that have happened there. Um, she meets Jem, who is Joss' brother and falls in love, um, which really, for me, I'm sorry, even back in those days, if a man or took me into his home and told me to cook his lunch, I'd probably up and slug him in the face. Um, who would do that? A man you've never met, you're just going to go into his house and cook him a meal. You have no idea how he likes it cooked. To be fair, that's how most meals start when you... Yeah. Um, but no, I just... I didn't find that realistic at all. Uh, it was a bit insta lovey for me um even though i read a lot of romance which has insta love in it that wasn't what i thought i was going to get going in i thought i was going to get more of a build to that but it was literally she met him bam she's in love no uh and then there was one character in this who i don't really know what to say without giving it away without giving spoilers away but there's one character that you're not quite sure about and you don't actually get to know until the end why however that's not fully fleshed out that could have done with a bit more writing in it um this book is quite short i mean 300 pages is not short but it's not long either and i just think it could have done with another 100 pages or so and the ending um she has a choice mary has a choice and I think she made the wrong one. And to be honest, quite a few people, we've had the book club decision um, discussion at the point that I'm talking about this. And I think we pretty much all agreed that the decision she made was not the one she should have made. She should have gone another way. Uh, so, yeah, there was a bit of a bit of a drop at the end of the month for me. Um, but like I say, I will give more Daphne du Maurier a try. Um, I do want to continue trying to read classics. Um, I have quite a few that I've owned for quite a few years. Um, so I need to get on with those. But um, yeah, not middle of the road. I wouldn't recommend it per se, but I, it wasn't bad writing. Um, so the, what, what story was there was good. It just needed a bit more. They just needed a bit more time in there and there wasn't quite enough. So those were all the books that I finished in the month of November. How did your reading month go? I hope you had a really great month. If you did, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and if you've enjoyed this video, give me a like, thumbs up. And please, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you all again soon in another video. Bye.